We begin our show talking about January being Alzheimer's Awareness Month. And that is usually the month where we see the Walk for Alzheimer's taking place in the region. Of course, that walk will take a different shape this year. Here to talk about that and about her own days as a supporter of her father with Alzheimer's. We have Natalie Walker in studio. Natalie, first off, uh, on behalf of everyone here, we'd like to express our condolences on the loss of your father. Thank you. Can you talk about your father's struggle with Alzheimer's? How long was he dealing with that disease? Dad was diagnosed for um, about probably about five or six years, but we noticed um, like the telling of the stories and uh, forgetting things before that and kind of some some odd behaviors. But I'd say that he he did pretty well considering I was always afraid he would forget me and he never did like right till the end. So that was really kind of a little bit of a win I felt like <laughs> with yeah. Alzheimer's. And he remembered uh, my brother and my mom and my husband. We were all part of a care team for dad. He did, he did pretty well to manage, you know, we forget that he, we had funny moments sometimes. One time I took him out for lunch uh, to a Mexican restaurant and he tried to use a, a fork to, to drink his daiquiri. Like, and you had to laugh at those moments because they were sad, but they were also, oh my goodness, ridiculous. So the time he asked for maple syrup to put on his chicken pot pie. And I said, I'm sorry, you want what? He said, well, it's missing something. And I said, okay. So I got him the maple syrup. Um, so, you know, there was, there was good days and bad days. There were, there were days when, you know, he wanted to argue or he didn't understand. Around, when COVID hit, he didn't understand why we were staying in or why we weren't going out for dinner anymore. Right. So. What were the challenges of being his caregiver during COVID? Dad was very social um, right up until he started to decline. We often went for dinner at least once a week. Dad and I and my husband, we'd go for dinner. He came uh, grocery shopping with me every time I'd go out or run to the store, or he, he used to come to my gym with me and he would, he would sit at the gym and, and count my reps as I was working out. <laughs> like he was very active in the community um, despite um, having Alzheimer's, but then COVID, all that stopped. And he didn't understand why he couldn't go there and what, what do you mean you're going grocery shopping and I'm not coming with you? And then the challenges became, I needed someone to be with him while I went grocery shopping. Of course. I couldn't go um, and leave him. So was he living with you and your husband during all of this? Yes, yeah, so dad moved in with us last August and he's been with us all that time. And we had um, a phenomenal care team between my mom and my brother and my husband and, and myself and then my gra his grandson, my nephew, was one of the caregivers. We also um, hired a young guy that was a, a son, the son of one of my friends, and he ended up being with dad for over a year and a half. And he was in my house every, almost every day. Um, when I was going to work, he was in my house like seven, eight hours a day. And um, yeah, so he was never alone. It's amazing that you took on that role and stayed with him right till the end. Most families can't take that on. I yes. feel that they can't deal with all of those changes. It's, a, it's definitely a lot to take on. And I, I would say that having a strong family is a good start, right? My, my parents had separated over 20 years ago, but my parents had always remained good friends. And my mom was just as much a part of the decision making and the caregiving as as if they had been married. And my brother was at my house, you know, twice a week. If my husband and I just wanted to go for a drive or have a break, my brother always came. And um, I think I we were just able to, to do that. And then of course, you know, my dad was, my dad was very fortunate as he, he had a good pension and he was, we were able to get some care and we get, got some care from the Lynn and we just tapped into absolutely every single thing we could. How much did you need support from the Alzheimer's Society and some of the supports that they offer? The Alzheimer's Society was amazing. Um, the members in Niagara uh, were great. From the very beginning, I, I took a course there. I took a four week course just to understand Alzheimer's better and, and get to know what to expect to the phone calls of like, I don't understand why he's doing this. Like, can you give me some advice or some tips? They were great for things like that. There wasn't a lot of services we could use directly in home when COVID hit because dad didn't want to sit. They, they offered some amazing stuff, but dad did not want to sit in front of a computer and, and be a part of, of right. groups like that. So a lot of the support 
uh, was was for me and was for um, helping me manage and giving me ideas and and, and they they taught me to be a better uh, advocate and to be a bigger voice, um, which I had to be in hospitals or for doctor's appointments. Um, so the help they gave is amazing. The walk is a little bit different this year. There's a number 10,787. Right. That's the number of steps that the Alzheimer's Society is asking people to commit to. Why that number? That's the number of people who've been diagnosed um, with Alzheimer's who, and who are living with Alzheimer's just in Niagara. Wow. Yeah, it's a lot of people. Have you been a supporter of the walk for a number of years? I have. This is my, uh, I think this is our fourth year. Our team is called Doing It For Our Dads. Um, my friend Wendy Gomez and I uh, started it. Her dad was diagnosed and passed away from Alzheimer's as well. And uh, yeah, this is our, our fourth year and our team gets a little bigger every year and, and we're gonna be doing it virtually this year or at, at our own locations at home, outside. That's why we have scarves instead of shirts this year. <laughs> and there's also something happening on January 31st. The trivia event is um, kind of to, to wrap everything up after the walk and it, the, the teams are to go on and, and we're gonna participate in a great uh, huge Zoom call and there's gonna be prizes and there's lots of uh, facts around dementia and Alzheimer's and it's just kind of a way to wrap it all up because we can't all be together this year. Natalie, thank you for joining us today and sharing your story. And uh, we just want to get the website out there. It's alzgiving.ca slash Niagara. Thanks again. And again, our condolences about the recent loss of your father. Thank you.